Oh, so I'm at the uh, Hope Centre in Hales Owen this morning. Um, we're, I've organised an event with the big lottery, getting local voluntary organisations to come together to find out what the big lottery has got to offer the, uh, the local area. I'm with John Taylor from um, the big lottery. So John, what sort of thing do you think people can get out of today? What, well, what's your objective? We've got millions of pounds. We're in a very privileged position and we want to spread that right across your constituency, right across Dudley, right across the West Midlands. Mm -hmm. And what we've come to do today really is to help people understand the options available to them, the tips for getting a good bid in, mm -hmm. and some of the learning from each other because we've got out there lots of groups that have had lottery funding already and we want to share those messages wider. Yeah. And what's, what's, the, what's the key priorities for the big lottery in terms of your funding? Well, what sort of things are you trying to tackle? Changing people's lives, I guess, ultimately. That's mm -hmm. what it's about. It's about the difference our funding can make, whether that be for young people or older people. We have a real focus on community action, mm -hmm. you know, the big society agenda, volunteers, mm -hmm. getting people mobilised in their community mm -hmm. to take control of their community. Mm -hmm. Also for us, we've got difficult decisions to make, so we have to focus some of our money on those most in need. Yep. So that's a really important thing for people to tell us how their community will experience difficulty and, and what they will do to respond to it. Okay. Well, thanks very much for coming along today. Laura and I are in the very privileged position of being partially responsible for making decisions about those changes. We help people from birth right through, in fact, to death on the legal counselling and support children when their parents have, have gone. And we help small communities, big communities, cities, villages all around the country. And what we want to do with you today is share some of our knowledge and hopefully give you some of the stuff we know. This <coughs> grant is a couple of hundred pounds. Our largest grant goes into the several millions. Okay. We can fund volunteers, we can fund staff, we can fund buildings, we can fund parks, we can fund village halls, we can fund citizens advice bureaus, we fund mother and toddler groups, we fund old age people's luncheon clubs, we fund pretty much most things that go to make up an active community. We don't fund them all, and as I said earlier on, we reject quite a few of them because we don't have enough money to fund everything that comes through. But what we do is very broad based. Okay? <coughs> but one of the things we do, and it's what the government tells us we should do, is we've got to check that what we fund makes a difference. Okay? But it's not just about saying, let's all get together and have a nice lunch. Um, that actually, by bringing people together and potentially paying for their lunch, something happens that changes the lives of people. So that could be better social skills by bringing older people together. It could be reducing loneliness. It could be extended life chances by actually being more active and getting out of their own house and socialising. But we are interested, not in, in some ways what the money is spent on, but what difference the money would do. Okay? And we call that, in our language, outcomes. Okay, so what is the long-term outcome? So, for example, we might fund the refurbishment of a community centre. Okay, and it costs £100,000, and you get a new kitchen, there's a new toilet, and a certain new institute to stay. Okay, it's great. But actually, it's what allow, that allows to happen to people by being able to run exercise classes, by the MP being able to hold their constituency surgery there, by the GP or the chiropodist or the hairdresser being able to hire a bit of that community space to provide a community service. They're the kind of outcomes we're interested in. So at Waterfall, that gives grants of between £300 and £10,000, okay? Good news with a Waterfall, the success rate, okay, in the Waterfall, so for those that apply, those that get the money, is about 60%, okay? So, you know, it is, relatively speaking, in lottery terms, a simple process. You get an answer within a couple of months, one application form, we don't ask for your constitution and your bank accounts unless we're interested in giving you a grant. There's no point asking for that until we know whether 
you're likely to be funded. And at the end of the year, when you spend the money, um, you soon send back a single voluntary report. Okay? So, moving up the ladder, reaching communities. Who's heard of reaching communities? Okay. Often reaching communities is for groups that perhaps think of employing a member of staff or perhaps have a member of staff already um, within the charity or voluntary group. Reaching Communities gives grants of between £10,000 and wait for it, half a million pounds. Okay? The average grant is about £300,000, so we're talking serious money there. Um, generally, it goes over several years. Normally, we give grants for up to five years to Reaching Communities. And, you know, these are quite established organisations. This isn't normally for a very small <coughs> local neighbourhood project with no volunteers. It's generally for something that's working at a bigger scale and has quite advanced systems. Okay? Within reaching communities as well, there's also a buildings component to it. So if you want to refurbish or potentially build a new community building, there's a specialist pot of money within reaching communities for that. Just to give you an idea of what this means for the West Midlands, which is what Laura and I run in for the Big Water Fund, every year, my waterfall budget is about £6 million for the West Midlands. Okay? That means we give away about 800 grants a year okay, throughout the West Midlands. My budget for reaching communities is, it varies from year to year, but it's somewhere between 10 and £15 million every year. But, as I said right at the beginning, we will get requests for 60, 70, 80 million pounds. So, you know, I'm not trying to uh, pull the wool over your eyes and say, just because you come today, you're going to get the money, because it doesn't work. out to those most in need with our funding and um, and he also mentioned right at the very beginning outcomes which is the word that we use to describe the difference that we want to make with our money um, and so we ourselves have outcomes um, for our programs and under a water for all there are four outcomes that we would like our projects to try and slot into and say that they're working towards so if you want to apply to a water law, you need to show that your project meets at least one of these outcomes that apply to it to a water law. Um, now, before I go into them, um, it's really, you'd be really pleased to know that you can fit almost anything into these outcomes, <laughs> pretty much. Um, they're very broad, so it does give you lots of scope for the things that you want to do. But I'll just run through them quickly. Um, the first outcome is around having a <coughs> chance in life. Um, so uh, that's about perhaps maybe people accessing new training or development, giving a cha them a chance to learn new skills, um, or it could be um, just giving people an opportunity to have a go at something perhaps that they've never, have, never had a chance to do before. Um, so that's quite, quite a broad outcome really. Uh, the second one, stronger communities. It's um, getting people together to tackle things that are happening, or problems, or challenges, issues in their local area. And that's about bring, that really that co co cohesion between people, getting them to work together and form those relationships and networks as a community. The third one is around improved rural and urban environments. So this could be about improving um, a space in the community. Maybe you've got an empty green space and you want to put some play equipment up somewhere. Or it could be about the building. So John mentioned, you know, so some groups apply to us for refitting kitchens or, um, or doing out their toilets to make sure their buildings are accessible for everybody. So that, that's really about the environment in which we live and making improvements to that for people in the, in the area. 
and the last one, healthier and more active people in communities. Um, so really we are talking about improving people's health here, um, but it could be anything from mental health, um, you know, just stress, um, depression perhaps, right up to physical activity, so there are lots of projects that want to run healthy eating workshops, run um, keep fit classes for local people in their community, getting kids out and about rather than being couch potato after school. So there's all sorts of different ways in which you can improve people's health and that would fit into that program outcome. So things that Awards for All can <coughs> look for within those sorts of projects. Um, we can um, fund you to hire equipment or purchase new equipment. So you might want some laptops to run some internet classes for people, um, any, any, any kind of equipment hire. Um, IT equipment again falls under that. Um, we can fund session workers, um, but under a water rule we can't fund salaried posts. So if you do want to get a specialist in to run some classes or some activities, that's fine as long as they're employed on a sessional basis um, rather than being you know, on, your, on your books as a, as a, as a salaried member of staff. Um, we can fund updating the equipment, the equipment and the premises for health and safety. We can talk to them a bit about already. Um, make sure that you're at the right standard that you need to be to be able to operate. Um, we can fund for training. This is quite popular when um, organisations do want to run certain classes, um, but they want to train their volunteers to be able to do that. It will improve, improve the sustainability of the organisation if those volunteers have been trained up long term to do that. So we can fund that kind of activity and the expenses that go with anything anything a volunteer is doing for that project um, and any hire of venue and that kind of thing as well. So basically it's the kind of costs of running the project, uh, the sorts of things you can pay for. There are of course things that we can't pay for. Um, and the, a couple of these really important ones are that we can't pay for anything that starts to happen before you've got the money. So it's really important that if you are thinking of applying, you do it in plenty of time. Make sure that you've got that money in your bank account before you start doing anything. Because we can't fund anything that's already happened. Um, we, I think I've mentioned already we can't fund repeat activities for the same kinds of things um, that we've already done, unfortunately, at the moment. Um, and there are other bits and pieces like the day-to-day -day running costs of it, the salaries, which I've already mentioned, uh, but we come from the sessional workers. And um, anything that benefits an individual, this is about communities really coming together. So anything that's, that's for one person, we can help them do So that would be like maybe a musical instrument that someone actually owns <coughs> himself, yeah. rather than it being chaired by the whole group, just to give you an idea of what yeah. that means. And building and refurbishment work costing more than £25,000. Really, awards for all is for small scale projects. So, anything larger than that, we'd probably be directing you somewhere else, maybe reaching <coughs> communities, which we'll come into in a minute. Anything from £10,000 to half a million pounds um, for <coughs> revenue projects. And there's capital funding, and I need to emphasise it is for multi-use community facilities. So it's not just for a sports club, it's not just for a nursery. It's got to be used by a range of organisations, probably something like the Hope Centre, you know, that kind of thing, where lots of different groups come in, use it, hire it, run sessions from it. It's that kind of thing. It's certainly not money for offices for a charity, if you know what I mean. It's to do things in to bring people together. So there's pots of money there. Clearly, these are big pots of money and it takes quite a lot of work to get this funding. At the moment, on both of these, we have something called an outline proposal, which means, effectively, on about two sheets of paper, you submit your idea to us. Within 15 days, we tell you whether we think it's something we would invest in. And then if we say yes to that, you then have up to six months to write a much, much, much more detailed plan, okay? Depending how much you ask for, the plan gets even more detailed. So if you do go for half a million pounds, you can imagine we're gonna ask for a lot of information and your chances of success will be less than if you ask for 50,000 pounds, for example. So that's a process. It starts with an outline proposal, a stage one, quick turnaround, fairly simple information. It's not simple, simple, but it, it, it's kind of proportionate. 
then if we're interested in your project and we think we, we're interested in funding it, we let it through and, and, and there will be a more detailed process to go through. That's effectively what reaching communities is, is whether you go for revenue funding or capital funding. Who can apply? Broadly the same criteria as Laura said. Um, things with schools and local authorities here, we are much tougher on those. Because 90% of our money goes to charities, we really look at if Dudley Council wants to put in and ask for £300,000 from, from, from us, and we'd be looking to see that it's absolutely additional, that it's using volunteers, that it's community driven, and we're not subsidising something that they're cutting, you know, um, uh, which I, I hope you uh, uh, agree with. Same with schools kind of thing. We'd want to see that this is really community driven, and we are really strong on checking that it is additional to what they have to do. So for example, we would never fund teachers. What we might fund is a breakfast club before school to help kids who <coughs> don't get a decent breakfast in the morning or need extra support. What we won't fund is curriculum kind of activities. Okay, so that's the broad criteria, but you don't need to be a registered charity. I mean, that's the important thing. A lot of people think, come to the lottery, you have to be a registered charity, you don't. Um, I'm not going to go through this in more detail. The grants, up to five years, big money, um, we support something called full cost recovery. So basically, generally, you apply for a project. You want to run a gardening club for older people, okay? Um, we will fund the gardening club for older people, but we will also fund a proportion of the cost that it takes to run your organisation. You know, a bit of the accountant's time, a bit of the higher cost of the office, a bit for the computers, <coughs> a bit for the lighting and that. We'll fund proportionately the amount to run the organisation that delivers the project. Okay? And we call that in the jargon full cost recovery. There's lots of guidance about it, I'm not going to go through it now. We also, as I said, have buildings money, separate pots of money, um, big grants. Generally, generally it's about improving and replacing <coughs> and, and refurbishing existing. We generally don't build new builds just because there's actually huge numbers of community facilities that are actually in disrepair or actually aren't maximised usage at the moment. We'd much prefer to get something open more hours and make it nicer than, 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 than put up a competitive <coughs> building somewhere else that, that, that reduces the market. So we have money for that. Um, it's very targeted. Only certain parts of the country can apply because it's our emphasis on those most in need. What difficulties do people face within the community that you're living and working in? Why is it that they face those difficulties? What is it about their lives and their situations that mean that they are in need? And how can those needs be addressed, which is probably the key question that we do. And I guess, really, the reason you're all here is because you're trying to do some of this stuff and you're trying to reach these people in. Um, but it's really important that you think these questions through, especially when you're looking at forming a project idea um, and applying to us to, to, to fund that. So, um, what you need to do is, once you've thought through those questions and you've got it clear in your mind, yes, this is what these people, this is the issue these people face, and this is what we want to try and do about that, um, then you need to tell us. Our grants officers sit in two cities in the UK. They sit, sorry, in England. They sit in Birmingham and they sit in Newcastle. And that is where they receive all your applications um, and they read everything you've written on paper. But they are not experts in every area. We don't organise it so that grants officers are experts on individual areas of the country. It means we completely rely on you telling us about your projects and about the community and the people that you're wanting to reach. So it's really important that you evidence the need for your project to us. So what I would like you to do is have a think about how you could evidence need to us and I will give you a bit of a clue to start with, just to start you on the right idea. Um, it could be to show that you have a need for the project, you might have a waiting list for your service, for example. You, whatever it is that you're running, you've not got enough space 
enough time, enough resource to deal with the number of people that you've got knocking on your door saying we want to do this. So that is one way that you can show us that your project is needed. As the local member of parliament, it, it, I want to put out the message that if anybody, any organisation locally, who um, wants me to help them, to support them, um, in either applying for big lottery funding or in any other way, never hesitate to contact my office. I can't promise to be able to wave magic wands, but I'm here uh, as a representative of the community wanting to facilitate discussions with local voluntary organisations because I believe that they play a very, very vital role in the community and I want to do everything I can do in what is admittedly difficult times to be able to support those groups. So ne don't hesitate to contact my office. Um, Samantha Handley, who is my secretary, is always on the end of the phone. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to help in any way, whether that's supporting applications or understanding more about projects or even starting, um, starting projects which people have got ideas about. I've worked with a number of people in this room to get a number of projects started. So thanks very much for coming. I also wanted just to thank the staff of the Hope Centre who um, have put a lot of effort into helping us to organise this event today, particularly Camilla, Wendy and, and, and all of her volunteers who always um, work very hard here. Um, and the Hope Centre does a lot of great work in this in this community. So thanks for coming, uh, and I hope you found it useful. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Peter Willis. What organisation? Um, I'm representing First Radio in the Escape Room and I'm from Tomorrow. So, what did you get out of today? Um, I've got in today a great idea of how we can overlay tackling the grants that we need to tackle to be able to hopefully build a new building that will serve the scouting within our district. So, tell me a bit about your vision, what you do, how many kids you've got in We've grown. We've recently grown from um, 21 members up to nearly 200 members, and that's how we end. We're offering activities, doing kind of uh, rock climbing, uh, mountaineering, camping, uh, general sports, and we're targeting a lot of the kids off the Brickhouse um, area. So it's good for the kids to get them off the streets and come and do some activities with us. Oh, fantastic! Thanks for coming along. No worries.